Hi guys and welcome back. I'm sorry I've been away for a couple of weeks. Uh, there's been some stuff here in my hometown that I've needed to uh, to take care of. I'm part of some community stuff, some com community-led events and, and charities, and I've needed to dedicate my spare time to that for the past two weeks or so. Don't worry, the bike is in exactly the same state that it was when I did my last video two weeks ago. We took the drive shaft off in the previous video. No work has been done to the bike off camera, so rest assured I am still gonna be showing you how to do everything from there. Before we move on to the next proper bike topic, um, the next part we wanna remove, which is actually the engine, that's the next step. I wanna do a very quick video to address a, an inquiry or a, a message that I keep getting, and that is to do a full breakdown of the carburetors. Now I'm not gonna go into the whole detailed specs of the carb, you can find that information online and you can find it in the user's manual. But what I do wanna do is illustrate to people that have maybe got hold of one of these bikes or any other bike that runs on these sorts of carburetors. If your bike's been sat for a while, chances are it's not gonna run. And if it is running, it's gonna run lumpy, it's gonna run and it's gonna pop and bang. And that's all down a lot of the time to the carburetors being dirty on the inside. If the bike has been stored for a long period of time and it was never drained at that point of storage, i.e. the fuel being drained out of the carbs and the pet lock being closed, over the course of six to 12 months, you'll get gunk and, and dried, crusted, horrible innards of your carburetors and fuel won't be able to pass through. So let's get them on the bench and I'll show you how to disassemble them. This is not gonna be a complete breakdown of the carburetors, okay? This is gonna be a quick how to get it working again kind of video. If your bike's been sat for a long time, chances are it's clogged on the inside. That means there's gunk and, and crustiness on the, on the inside of the float bowl. Your jets are most likely gonna be blocked and your bike inevitably is not going to run. And if it is running, it's not running the way it should be. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with these carbs is obviously get them out of the bike. I'll put a link here in regards to that video because there is a video on my channel showing you how to get rid of them, how to remove them from the bike. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take this float bowl off because this float bowl is gonna tell us really what condition the carb is and by definition, what condition the entire bike is in. So grab yourself the correct size screwdriver and just start undoing these screws. So once you've taken the float bowl off, you'll notice a couple of things in here. You've got a gasket, which you may wanna make sure you've got this on hand before you start taking the float bowl off. And that's because if you haven't changed your gasket for quite some time, there is a very strong chance that this will perish. Um, I did mine about eight months ago, so it's okay. So here is your float here. Now this works pretty much in the same way as your toilet system does. When the level of fluid inside drops, it enables the flow from the source, i.e. in this case the tank, to enter the float bowl. And once it rises to a certain point, because it's floating on the fluid, once it rises up, it cuts off the supply, it's exactly the same as a toilet. And if this gets damaged in any way, let me pull this down here for you. If this float bowl, sorry, if this float gets damaged and is it allows fluid to go inside, because this is only hollow and it's very delicate stuff. If that gets filled with fuel, then it's never gonna rise, is it? It's always gonna be, it's always gonna sink, it's not gonna float and therefore your bowls will continually flood. So that's something to bear in mind if you're getting a flooding carburetor is that you might have a bad float. The next thing we have in here is the jets. This is kind of carburetors 101, okay? If, you're, if you can't get your bike to start and the fuel can't get to where it needs to go, check your jets. And that's what this little brass thing is here. Now this has a hole that is a certain size rated to the carburetor or the fuel supply. Um, you'll often hear about people jetting their carburetors and that's effectively getting a bigger jet with a, 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 a bigger hole in the center that will allow more fuel to come through, uh, giving people more speed. Check 
that you can see through. If you can't see through, there you go, you can see through mine. If you can't see through it, clean it. Get a pipe cleaner, maybe some compressed air, and squirt that through, and then pop it back in. Don't forget your washer. Same goes with all the jets that you're gonna find in these carburetors. Let me just tighten that one up a little bit. So don't forget. There we are. So this is your main jet, and then we have your, your pilot jet here. There's another one. Make sure it's clean. Yep, I can see through it. Can you guys see that? Couple notes of caution. Don't go sticking these carburetors in a whole vat of carburetor cleaner. If carburetor cleaner ever gets into the diaphragm on the top, you'll destroy your carburetor. Um, if this isn't moving freely as well, take note of that, it should be moving freely. If it's not, it could be causing you some carburetor problems or fuel problems. So, a couple of things. Make sure it's clean. Make sure the jets are clean and you can see through them. Okay, blow some air through them, soak them, go and get the whole thing's ultrasonic cleaned if you have to. But make sure this is sparkly. Make sure we put it all back together the way it was. Okay, gasket. We'll only go on one way. Now, I'm sorry I haven't actually been able to demonstrate how to clean the jets. This, these carbs are actually pretty clean. So what I will do though, is before these go back into the bike uh, over the next couple of weeks, I will make sure that we do a full carburetor video. I just wanted to get this one up because I've had so many people asking me to do a, a, um, a carburetor video that I just felt like I kind of needed to. And while I know this one wasn't really that in depth, it covers the questions that the majority of people are asking. And you know, if they're having problems getting their bike running or they've, they've just bought a bike and for some reason they can't seem to get fuel to go where it needs to go or the, the bike won't turn over, chances are it's the jets in the float bowl. Okay guys, so that's it. So I know that wasn't a really detailed in-depth video regarding these carburetors, but it should answer a few questions regarding getting the bike started if it's been sat for a while. The amount of people that don't realize just how important their carburetors are, who've never taken a carburetor out of a bike before, who have never needed to ever think about a carburetor, these are critical to the bike working. And if those jets are blocked, your bike is not gonna run. So. Take your time with it, be careful. It is only a few screws. You don't need to go you know, worrying too much about it, but just take your time. And if there's dirt and grime and crap all in there, that's probably your problem 99% of the time. You need three things to get a bike to run. You need fuel, air, and spark. And if you don't have one of those three things, your bike's not gonna run. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I promise before the end of the week, we will be getting that engine out of the bike so that we can get the frame sent off to be sandblasted, ready for paint, and then the whole rebuild process begins with a few bits and pieces here that you know I need to do to the engine, such as the piston rings. The goal is to have it ready um, by the end of February. So we shall see. Anyway, it's been great being back, guys. Leave a comment in the section below and I shall speak to you in the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.